Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I will be having a quick look at this, the dome command which you can find under uh, insert. So insert features and there it is dome. Um, but obviously it's quicker just to type dome in and then get your command over there. So the reason I'm looking at this is not just to show you how the dome command works but also to see if it's possible to create this feature which is a revolved solid swept cut um, with these ends in it but that spans two surfaces and I want to see if I can do the same thing using the dome command so they've got that sketch prepared just to see if it's going to work but before we do that let me show you how the dome the actual dome command works so let's unsuppress this and I've created a series of sketches um, I've created a square, a square with rounded corners and a circle, and then I've split this face using the curve split line command. Um, so I've got separate faces. So dome is a um, solids command, it is not surfaces, so you can't delete these faces and hope to create a, a dome. Um, so let's just see if we can get this dome to function. So I'm going to select the square first and you'll see straight away that depending on the height over here um, it'll give you a different result. Right. So the other thing I can do um, depending on how I've set it up is I can use a sketch and that's the sketch here which I've placed already uh, and I've, I've chosen the point on the sketch because I can now alter the height of that sketch So let's make that 2.3 or something arbitrary and see what happens. And you'll see that that's in that fashion, you can actually control the height of the dome as well. Um, I'm going to edit this feature and then select this face. And what you'll notice is that you get a different set of um, opportunities at the bottom here. You get continuous dome. So at the moment it's at zero because um, it's default to that. So if I select continuous dome, you're getting a sort of a tangent or a curvature continuous blend between the face that it's originating from and then onto the dome. But if you say non-continuous, then you get a sharp division. Um, and then you can, you can put in a fillet here if you want, 0.5. Okay, so just to show you how that works, so I'm going to suppress that one and let's go back into this feature and then select the circle because this is the one that it works best on. And you can see that at the bottom, instead of giving me a, a sort of a continuity option, we now have an ellipt elliptical option, which is, um, if we just bump this up, you'll see that it keeps that shape as an ellip elliptical parabolic type shape. A parabola is probably the wrong word. Um, whereas if I remove it, you'll actually get, if you go too large, you'll get sort of a ball appearing on your surface. All right. So there we go. That's the dome command. Um, I'm going to suppress this for now and then just uh, go back to my original aim, which is to see if we can do the same thing as that using a dome instead. So there's my sketch. It spans two surfaces. Um, if I go to curves and I say split line, I should be able to select that item there. Make sure it doesn't does we don't go single direction because it'll only choose one of these faces, one or more faces. So we need some faces. There we go. Right, so here we go, we've got one, two faces, and if I go to the dome command and I select these two faces, um, hmm, at the moment it's not doing anything. Let's see what happens if I say okay, inside. Right, this might just be too large. I think that's the problem. Let's type in something small like 0.4. There you go. Okay, so it's going inside, as you can see, or I can make it come out. 
but I want it to go in and I want it to be about 0.3 millimeters deep and we'll see so <laughs> not a very nice shape and definitely not what I'm looking for but at least you have an idea of what the dome command can do thanks for watching